Hey, what up, man? So, um, uh, tonight we will all um, begin watching the much anticipated, the long awaited for uh, Michael Jordan and Bulls um, documentary. Uh, you see by the title, man, <laughs> it's no longer okay to be like Mike. All right. Um, Michael Jordan doesn't get his proper due and credit, especially now in the black community, man, because everybody's so woke, right? And um, they try to compare him to athletes that came after him, um, not understanding that, you know, um, you know, everything has its time and everything has its place in different eras, handle different things, different ways. Um, Michael Jordan paved the way, not only for black athletes, but for athletes um, uh, in general, as far as being able to market themselves and make themselves their own brand um, uh, and get paid the most um, out of the, the product that they provide for not only the, the teams and leagues they represent, but, um, uh, you know, just hell actually uh, economy boost uh, for for the um, the nation and if not world if you could you know, challenge it because you know Michael Jordan um, has one of the biggest um, support supporters or the support bases um, based in Asia so um, and of course you know today we had to go ahead and you know some light some light but um yeah man so this is basically about um, how it's no longer cool to be hyper competitive, you know, in today's day and age, especially as a black man. Um, you know, you already have the over aggressive tag on you. You already have um, uh, the hyper masculinity tag and all those other things. When that's not even the case, it's just you know a natural level of um, things that come with testosterone, man. <laughs> okay. But in today's day and age where, again, you know, they want to clip, <laughs> they want to clip your nuts and um, they expect all men to be um, uh, socially, socially neutered. And, you know, you can't raise your voice. You can't, um, uh, you know, approach a female. You can't do any of those things that you were literally um, genetically and biologically mapped to do. OK, um, uh, a man is, is supposed to be more aggressive. OK, your aggressiveness can save your life at times. OK, you raising your voice could, could save your life and, and de-escalate the situation before it gets out of hand. You know, if you check it in the proper time. And as men, we know that. But, you know, again, um, especially in the black community with thoughts being taken out of the household and everything being dominated by women and there being no um, very little, if any, logic put into the minds of these young young black men growing up, young black males growing up um, that will, you know, one day be men and, um, uh, you know, emotional control and things like that. Um, this is why we see the deterioration of our community even more so. And um, just to go back in the day, man, he's like, oh, you just some, some Jordan, no, Jordan stand. No, I wasn't. Actually, I hated Michael Jordan growing up because I couldn't afford Jordans. <laughs> and we all know if you're my age, you know, 30 or older, um, having Jordans was a status symbol, even more so than star starter jackets and starter hats, you know, because um, they were um, uh, a rare and hot commodity. Um, once they sold out, they sold out. Wasn't no fucking, um, uh, wasn't no retros, wasn't no reruns, wasn't no, no, um, uh, no restocks, none of that. All right, once, once the supply was gone, the supply was gone, man. You had to wait on the next pack, baby. <laughs> the next colorway or the next, um, uh, you know, the next, um, uh, the number, you know, the next signature uh, number that, that came out. And um, even then, like I said, man, people were skipping school and doing all kinds of crazy shit for a pair of shoes, right? Unfortunately, you know, you have violence and things, people getting robbed or even possibly killed over shoes. But, you know, that's another big fallacy, too, because, I mean, people been, been they, was, they were robbing for starter jackets. They were robbing for, um, uh, I remember up until the 2000, North Faces. Um, so, you know, uh, people always rob for jewelry, you know, people rob for watches, people rob for any cars. So, you know, that's a very um, weak straw man that a lot of people use and they try to put at the feet, lay at the feet of Michael Jordan as if if you stop making Jordans, people wouldn't still kill for something else. But again, that's that's um, uh, 
black people not knowing you falling falling for the okie doke and drinking the kool-aid into being turned against one of the best um examples of black manhood to ever grace the face of this planet you know what i'm saying um by all means um michael jordan's a self-made man he's a man that took his um god gifted physical talents and turned him into a you know turned himself into a conglomerate turned himself into his own brand and um is a billionaire certified you know um this man um played for many many years not being given his proper due and literally um digging the nba out of the hole that it was in and globalizing the game of basketball okay a lot of people tell you the reason why you have a euro league is because of the um, 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. Um, I, I've heard people, everybody from Paul Gasol to um, uh, um, Hito Turkoglu and, and uh, plenty of these other players that were inspired by um, uh, the 1992 dream, dream Team, you know, of course, headlined by Michael Jordan. And um, without him, you wouldn't have um, the outreach of the game of basketball that you do today. But um, getting to the point, um, this whole hyper masculinity thing, man, it's just not okay. And this is how and why LeBron James is being put up to replace um, Michael Jordan. Because even though um, he's a hulking figure, a you know physical, physiological, um, uh, you know anomaly in himself. His demeanor to the public anyway is that of being humble being meek um you know making the right play not playing hero ball not wanting to take the, the last shot and people um you know supporting that type of thing and people from my <laughs> from my generation and older is like what like stop no you're the guy as the guy bro the 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 team dies and and or lives with you so by all means, bro, if it's the last shot to be taken, you're supposed to take it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But again, being that they're trying to push um, uh, black men and young black males away from that that masculinity that's that's you know very deep within all of us. You know that that savage beast that's awaiting waiting to be awakened. Um, uh, of course, that's why they're doing so much to push up and prop up LeBron James. Um, to be the GOAT of basketball, which is just in itself, uh, it's not even close. For one, I don't even, he's not number two. If there, there, there is a number two, and you could argue Kareem Abdul-Jabbar being um, one, number one over Michael Jordan, there would be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar dominated at every level of basketball, from high school to college. He won every year in college. He, he has um, um, the same number of MVPs, regular season MVPs as Michael Jordan does. Um, uh, he has the same amount of championships as Michael Jordan does. So by all means, man, um, uh, and uh, and he's the number one overall points um, leader. And yeah, I know LeBron is probably on track to go ahead and beat that um, playing at the rate he's playing, you know, hopefully bar an injury or anything like that. But yet yeah, still, like I said, just because you end up with the, you know, um, Karl Malone is number two and no one has Karl Malone in their, their top, even in their top 10 all-time greatest players okay that's just that's to kill the stat argument Karl Malone is number two all-time in scoring and no one would put him as you know uh, even in their top 10 of greatest NBA players okay for the most part so that kills the whole stat argument and a lot of people don't even include Kareem that foolishly to me uh, in their top five okay so by all means, man, stats aren't everything. They are something, but they aren't everything. Well, ultimately, um, uh, the whole reason as to why, uh, and Michael Jordan said it himself, uh, Michael Jordan is very, very, he's very intelligent, man. He's a very intelligent guy, um, not in the game of basketball, but just life. And in order for you to be successful, man, you have to have a level of intelligence. Uh, you have to have a, a you know, a, a, a pretty good level of intelligence to be able to see the things doing. It's even um, uh, stated how, um, even though him and uh, excuse me, him and Charles Barkley on the, on are the best of terms right now, um, he knew better and he told Charles Barkley instead of them paying you money, take stock in the country, have them sell you shares of stock, because you know um, Charles Barkley is one of these um, uh, people that had uh, Nike signature line also back in the day and they still retro them here and there. Um, 
uh, you know, every couple of years. Um, CB34 is a pretty good line. But um, Michael Jordan always has like a good business sense. Um, to this day, he still does Hanes commercials. And what's, you, you may think, well, Hanes, why the hell underwear? But who don't need underwear? <laughs> you have a lifetime, a lifetime um, uh, contract with something that you're always going to need. What's better than that? They're never going to go out of business, all right? You always need some draws, right? But, um, yeah, man, just um, seeing, um, can't wait to see what's going to become of the, um, you know, <laughs> the start of this tonight. Um, There's going to be a lot, a lot of talk. Um, but, um, and they're going to flip this, the media, the liberal um, <laughs> sports media is going to flip this to make Michael Jordan out to be a bad guy and a bully and all these other things and not understanding that in that era, man, that was a requirement to just even survive. I mean, how, how can you think that uh, Michael Jordan's a bad guy when you had the bad boy Pistons that were literally, <laughs> you had the bad boy Pistons and you had, um, uh, even though it was a little bit before his time, but it was the same era, you had um, Dr. J grabbing Larry Bird and fist fights, you know, left and right in the NBA. And yet still, you know, um, for the most part, um, it was just that um, hyper competitiveness, man, that a lot of people never understand because it's not them. Uh, you see where I'm at, man. Um, fortunately, they got the fucking, they got the goals boarded up. Like, fucking, oh, my God, this shit is horrible. This is this is blasphemous, right? But, yeah, man, I'm that guy. Uh, oh, nigga, you ain't getting paid? Nigga, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. All right, if I wanted to get do cardio, I can go buy a jump rope. There's a track around here. There's treadmill somewhere. If I wanted to motherfucking just go ahead and get a sweat, I could do that. If I'm going to fucking, once I pick this ball up, I'm trying to win. And as a competitor, that's any time you in, in, a, in a sport, that should be your fucking goal. If you're not trying to win, why are you playing? Paid or not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and that was Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan said, it, you know, that's, he's a golfer, um, uh, you know, gambler. That's one of the biggest things, too. Um, uh, Knox on him was a gambler. I think they talked about it in um, the Jordan rules. And he has it's been several, several um, books written on him. Um, a lot of them not painting him in a good light because, again, uh, oh, the infamous comedian that story <laughs> ain't taking pictures with no niggas. And again, man, you got to think, at what level do you earn that that right? You know what I mean? The, with the with the, the king, the king don't have to fucking acknowledge the, the, the common people. It's at his discretion and who he does. And that's who Michael Jordan was. But, you know, again... <laughs> Um, people are so entitled, man, and you think that you 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 know what I mean you you you're owed so many things. And the further we get down the, the generation, the further we get down the line, and it's just like you know it is what it is. Am I am I I'm saying you know Michael Jordan is was all his assholishness? No, but all great people, or, you know, these celebrities or so on and so forth, are assholes to some point in the in, in you know degree. I mean, people tried to um, villainize Steph Curry a couple of year, um, years back. And Steph Curry is like one of the most wholesome individuals you can ever be because he turned down a, a young kid for a um uh, for a um for an autograph, and it was just like, hey man, the man already been signing autographs for hours upon hours, and you know your kid was just you know the one where he was all signed out. You know what's the big deal? But again, um, uh, you know we live in a day and a time where entitlement is 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 cool. Um, I remember, too, James Harrison, the um, linebacker for the Steelers and I think the Patriots before he finally retired. Um, he was saying how, you know, he, he takes his kids' participation trophies because he said participation, that's what's, what's wrong with these young boys. They're, they're told that you're a winner just for participating, and that's not, that's not the way of the world, man. That's, that's unrealistic. You send these young boys off for failure, especially young black boys. But, again, that's how society wants you to be. They want you to be docile. They want you to be satisfied with just being a part and, and having your face in the place. And that's just, that's not what we need. So, um, by all means, man, this went on um, a little bit longer than I anticipated. I want to keep it around, you know, 12, 13 minutes. But we about to hit the 15-minute mark. Ain't no big deal. You know, this is just some some good for you to take on anyway. But um, that's why um, kids no longer want to be like Mike, man. They don't want to promote that type of thing. They don't want to promote that that killer instinct. They don't want to. They don't want to. Um, you know, <laughs> promote that foot on your neck. And that's a lot of that's a lot of the um, commentary you even get from these um, sports pundits out here um, that are you know um, men that are usually older in their fifties and so on and so forth. And um, you know that's um, one of the main criticisms that you get LeBron James for not having that or, or finally gaining that once he left 
and um, uh, went to Miami at some point and he had help. And, you know, some people are just born with it and some people have to, to um, you know, learn it or earn it. <laughs> Same thing with physiques, man. Some people are just born with freakishly, you know, crazy genetics and they're just muscular and they're tall, strong, all these other things, or so on and so forth. But by all means, you know, if you're not, you have to get in that gym and you have to uh, make the necessary sacrifices and things to get there. You know what I mean? Because you, you, can, you can manipulate your body and force your body to do things that um uh you know you may not be, be be built for you know naturally to do but it's possible to get there where you need to be so by all means man uh, let's that on that one and i'll catch you on the next one